Hey, what's up guys? I'm Andrew with Field Treasure Design. So this is my family's dining table that I made out of reclaimed barn wood and it had a really big base for a long time. It was kind of a farmhouse, kind of chunky and big and it was great for a time, but now we thought we might do something a little more modern. And so we wanted to go with metal legs. And so after I started researching, I realized, man, they're a little expensive and I wasn't sure if they were gonna work and I wanted it to be customized. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll get into metal cutting and then welding. Then I thought, man, right now, I just don't have the time or the money to do that. And so, believe it or not, I spent less than $30 on these new modern dining legs. And they're not metal, they're wood. And so with two by fours, a couple cans of spray paint, and a little bit of creativity, you can do this for very easy and easily within a day. And I'd love to show you how I did it, so check this out. The first step was to cut my two by fours to length. Since I'm going to be splitting each two by four into two, I only needed to make one cut for both sets of legs. Here I'm doing a rough mock-up of the table base. This is one large set that I'm gonna cut into two. Since I wanted all of my edges to be nice and square, I started by cutting off the rounded edge of one side of the two by four. I did this on each board. Since I want my legs to emulate that metal tubular pipe look, I wanted them to be square on both sides. So I took my 2x4, turned it over to use the width as my gauge so that I could rip them down to exact squares. The measurement checks out and now it's time to start ripping these down. So here I'm just ripping down the 2x4s and turning them into nice square tubular shapes. And yeah, if you get a good look over there, you can see my awesome Houston Astros baseball socks. I'm repping them hard today. Now that I have all my pieces cut and ripped to size, I can now do another mock-up to show you exactly how these are going to look. It's important to sand the edges really smooth so that they emulate the metal table legs. I started with 60 grit to get off some of those rough edges, and then I moved it to 220 grit to finish them off real smooth. Using one of my legs, I traced a line to get an exact square of where I'm going to attach each leg together. After I did all the ends, I did the middle sections as well. This helps me know exactly where to attach the wood as well as to drill the hole in the middle. After I did the outside lines, I ran a line for the middle as well. This is gonna help me find the center to drill my pilot holes. I don't want any screw heads showing, so it's important to cover them with pegs. In order to do this, I'm drilling a 3 8 inch hole onto each area where I'm going to use a screw. I'm going as deep as the head of the drill bit, which is about a quarter of an inch thick. I do this for every side where I'm going to use a screw. I also drilled a few holes for where I'm going to attach from the base up through it to the tabletop. The first step of the assembly was to make the rectangle. So I glued up both sides and then oriented it on the table so that I could drill a pilot hole through so that I wouldn't split any of the wood. And as you can see, I've got one of my little helpers coming in and out to see what I'm up to. It's always fun when my kids are interested in what I'm building. So yeah, I did a pilot hole and then I'm drilling in a two inch screw to fasten these together. Really the glue is going to be doing the work here and you just repeat the process as you make your way around. The important thing is to keep them lined up so that everything is square, resembling that tubular look of metal legs. So once the rectangle is complete, you can then attach the perpendicular side of the table base. So here's a quick dry fit of how it looks. After I glued all the pieces, I flipped it over to make it a little bit easier to align it. Then I grabbed a clamp to hold it into position so that I could turn it back over and screw it from the top down to make sure my hole was straight. I was careful as I went down just so that my piece wouldn't fall below, but the clamp held it together really nicely. Then I grabbed my screw and was able to fasten it together. And boom. 
nice and secure. For the other side, it was just a matter of gluing it up and then flipping it over on its end because the other side was attached. So I then had a level surface in which to drill down on to be able to do the pilot hole and then to screw the fastener in. Then you flip it over on its back to assemble the last leg piece. And this is pretty straightforward as it goes straight down. And done. Looks pretty good. A couple more steps and we will be ready to paint. So first was to clean out some of the excess glue in the corners. I use an old straw to do this. It works really well. The next was to get ready and cut some pegs to close up those holes. Here I'm using my miter saw to cut one half inch long pegs out of my 3 8 inch dowel rod. It's important to have a back, as you can see there, just to keep the pegs from flying all over the place. But they just kind of roll off the edge, and when you're done, you can pick them all up, and you're good to go. Plugging the holes goes about like you'd expect, just using a little bit of glue and then getting them in the hole. I let them sit for just a second, and then I feel comfortable cutting them off with my saw. This is called a flush cut saw, and it makes it really easy. I'm also using poplar dowels, which are very easy to cut. So just using gentle strokes, it comes off really easy. Then you just make your way around the whole piece to plug up all the holes. And now one last sanding. So I want to clean up those little bit of scrapes from cutting off the dowels as well as any residual glue. And I really want these as smooth as possible. All right, time for the magic to happen. So this is Rust-Oleum metallic paint in a dark steel color, which is perfect for mimicking that tubular metal look that I wanted to go for. And yes, side note, you can get a great look at my complete outfit in this shot. The thing I'm most proud of is my Houston Astros socks with Burks. No shame here, folks, no shame. But yeah, the spray paint goes on great and it really only took one coat with just a little extra towards the end. But it goes on great and it really looks like metal. After I was done painting, we let them dry and there they are, the modern fake metal table legs that look great and it was so inexpensive and easy to do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project and it inspired you to make some of your own. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for all my future videos. Thanks and we'll see you later. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Andrew with Field Treasure Design. So this is my family's barn wood, reclaimed barn wood. Uh, say cut, cut. Cut, cut. Okay, start it, say get together. Get together. Now say action. Action. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Andrew with Field Treasure Design.